For treating spontaneous pneumothorax, many emergency physicians have switched over to much smaller percutaneous chest tubes. We can use them for trauma as well. These tubes are quick and easy to insert and patients like them better. After all, which would you rather have in your chest? This group of devices is often collectively referred to as pigtail catheters, even though most of these don't curl like pigtails. For this video, I'll stick with percutaneous chest tubes. There are lots of kits out there. Some have flexible pigtail catheters that are inserted by Selding or Technique. There are also some self-contained devices that have the tube and a small drainage device all in one that's quickly inserted and stuck to the chest. Others use a trocar to get into the chest. Since we don't use trocars all that often, that's what I'll demonstrate in this video. These devices work well for getting air or really thin fluids out of the chest. Blood, however, is not a really thin fluid. If you have a hemothorax big enough to see on a chest x-ray, I recommend you do a standard tube thoracostomy. While you can technically put this tube anywhere, there are two recommended places to stick this tube, the anterior chest or the lateral chest but you really need to think about your landmarks because you are stabbing your patient with a long, sharp metal stick. Let's go over those just a little bit more with my friend here. So, first let's do the anterior chest. It seems easy, it's the second intercostal space, midclavicular line, we've all been taught that, but let's go over it just to be sure. So, clavicle, here's the midclavicular line. The midclavicular line is not the same as the mid-chest line. Staying out here is going to help keep you away from the vessels that run in here. Second intercostal space is a little tougher to find. It's really hard to find your first rib. If you can't feel your first rib, it's really hard to count down to the second rib. So here's a trick. Find the junction between the manubrium and the sternum, which is right there. The rib that comes across from there is always the second rib. So you just follow that over. And the second intercostal space is below the second rib. So here's your landmark. And you're going to insert perpendicular to the chest wall, which is that angle. Now let's go to the lateral, which is my preferred spot. Do you remember where you put your regular chest tubes? Go there. So anterior to mid axillary line somewhere in there. The axilla is too high, the diaphragm is too low, but that diaphragm is a moving target. So I would aim for the fourth or fifth intercostal space, which is going to correspond with the nipple or the inframammary fold, but air high. You're not going to be sticking a finger in the cavity to see if it's the chest, like you do in a regular chest tube. As for the intercostal anatomy, we've all been taught that the vessels run under the rib. But there's also a smaller collateral set of vessels just on top of the rib. Aim for the lower half of the inner space to minimize your chance of nicking it. Let's take a closer look at this device. The chest tube is loaded on this metal cannula. The cannula fits into the most proximal hole of the tube. There's a stylet that's inside of the cannula. This stylet is sharp and pointy but this cannula is not sharp. That'll be important later. The chest tube hooks to this connecting tube. Only the end with the stopcock fits, so it's easy to figure out. The other end is flared. If you want to hook this up to a pleural drainage set and suction, you absolutely can. But most often, this end gets hooked up to the Heimlich valve, which is important because it allows air to travel in only one direction, out of the chest. There is an arrow on it. Look at the direction on the arrow to be sure you put it on the right way. Or you can look at the tubing inside the plastic canister. You can assemble all of this ahead of time, but I don't usually. It's too much stuff to flop around and get in my way. I hook up the connecting tubing and the Heimlich valve and I set them aside. 
Most chest tube insertion kits have all the other supplies you need for inserting this percutaneous tube. I use the sterile field, the towels, the prep solution, local anesthesia supplies, a number 11 blade, a large syringe for aspirating, and then all the suture and dressing supplies. Mark your site. It is really unfortunate to put this in the wrong side of your patient. Lay the patient with the head of the bed up about 30 to 45 degrees, or do reverse Trendelenburg if your patient is in spine precautions. You're sticking something into someone's chest that may be there for days. Wash your filthy hands, and please use sterile technique. Guesstimate about how much catheter you're going to need to put into the chest in order to get to the apex. The length's going to be different depending on whether or not you go laterally or anteriorly. Anesthetize very well. Pretend this is your grandmother giving this. Be generous with IV pain medication, but I've never had to actually do a procedural sedation for this. If you do enough local anesthesia at the pleura, this can be a fairly comfortable procedure. Make a skin nick with a number 11 blade. Then I hold the tube perpendicular to the chest with this grip. I hold it with both hands. My right hand is on the back of the device with my thumb holding the stylet engaged to the cannula. I use my dominant hand back here to keep the stylet engaged in the cannula because if you don't and you start inserting in, the stylet's going to get pushed back out and then you're just trying to ram a blunt plastic tube into the chest and that's going to cause more trauma. Use your thumb back here to keep this engaged so now you have the pointy end sticking out. My left hand is very near the chest wall, stabilizing the tube and helping me stop advancing when I need to. Chests generally don't want to be violated, and some oomph is going to be needed to insert this. Hold it perpendicular to the chest wall, hold down here, and you push the device in. There will be a definite give when you get through the pleura, and that's when you stop pushing. Take that sharp stylet out and don't stick yourself with it. And remember this cannula is blunt. Slowly advance the tube and metal cannula in a centimeter or so and then slowly angle it to where you want the catheter to end up. You could even direct it a little bit. If you want it to go to the apex, you can aim a little bit that way. As long as you go slowly and carefully, you shouldn't damage the lung. Once you're in and you're pretty sure you're in the pleura, you can confirm it by using a syringe and hook it right up here, and you should be able to aspirate air easily. All right, once you're sure you're in the pleura, you can feed this catheter off the cannula to about the depth you think you need it to go. Aim for a little bit longer if you have to, because you can always pull it back. And then you just take this off. I double check again to make sure I get good air return coming out of this. And if you want to just do some aspiration to try to resolve the pneumothorax faster, you absolutely can. Now the connecting tubing that I set up already is here. And you just hook that on. There's a stopcock that's attached to this. Make for darn sure that stopcock is allowing air out. This is currently in the direction of airflow, which is what you want. Look at the Heimlich valve. When the patient's breathing, particularly breathing out, you should see a little bit of fluttering in here. Secure this thing well. Suture it like a regular chest tube. Throw the petroleum gauze on, and then tape it down really well. You do not want this thing falling out. One caveat, don't tape over the end of the Heimlich valve. I shouldn't need to say that, but I need to say that. And that's basically the procedure. It's easier and faster to put in than a standard chest tube. It's more comfortable for the patient. 
and it works. If you haven't had a chance to place one of these, see what your facility has. There are many types of devices out there. Get familiar with your device and try it in the right setting. I think you'll like it.